So I'm Roy Delgado Jr. My role at Clips is to make speakers. I got lucky, um, a lot of divine intervention, I ended up at Clips. There, there, there was two young pups there, young pups. I was one of them and Carrie Geist was the other. And it was just Jim Hunter and some other guys, some new guys, some fresh blood were brought in and we were going like, so what are we supposed to do now? <laughs> we started talking to Paul a lot. And Paul, I was talking to Paul one day and uh, you know, Carrie and I were brought in for the commercial series. And so we started looking at large format compression drivers and high power woofers. And you know, we're, getting, we're trying to get some product ready for the commercial side. So I was sitting in there one day with Paul and he says, um, you know, I've been looking at that data that you guys have on those large format compression drivers. He said, you know, if we're able to get the clips or an LF just a little bit higher, we could use one of those compression drivers and take it back to a two-way, take the clip horn back to a two-way. So uh, we built some, some, I'm glad we had model makers back then. We built a lot of LF cabinets and uh, I would run the data the best we got was 550 hertz. We wanted to take it out to about 800 hertz. And um, after a while, he was getting disappointed. And I was, I was getting mad at myself because he was getting disappointed and we couldn't figure this out. And because I, I was involved in the con commercial side, I started looking at the uh, prototypes a little different. I started looking at them as uh, two acoustic sources, not just a bifurcated horn, but two acoustic sources. And I realized that we, had the, what they call the splay angle. That's the angle between the cabinets, too wide. And so I, I said, uh, I'm gonna go in there Monday and try something. So I just cut these boards, stuck them in the LF. And I mean, just literally just tacked them on. I just wanted to see if it changed anything. And, um, and it did. It went out to about 850 Hertz. I grabbed that curve, ran into Paul's office, and I said, look at this. And he goes, what did you do? I said, Paul, they're, they're splayed too far. And he says, show, uh, show, me, sh show me the speaker, show me the cabinet. So he got up and uh, we walked over there. He says, how soon can you draw one up so you can get it built? And I said, I'll, I'll do it today. It'll probably be built tomorrow. Got that sucker out, we tested it. And uh, it worked. It worked. Once we got the LF going, I pulled out. At the time, I was working on a smaller horn, and I pulled out the, the original because it literally it was on a shelf. That I mean, when I'm with Paul, a lot of the ideas that that he comes up with and we work on, I just put on the shelf because it's not time, I guess. So I dusted off the 403 horn and Paul wanted to hear it. So I put uh, a standard clip horn on one corner and I put a Jubilee on the other corner, I mean, the clip horn two on the other corner. And his reaction was like, and then he started shaking his head. And I'm like, oh man, something's wrong. <laughs> so I turned down the, the music and I asked Paul, what's wrong? And he said, we can't call it the clip horn too. And I said, um, well, why? And he said, uh, cause it's so much better than the clip horn. I, I was floored. And I said, sir, you're Paul Clips. You can call it whatever you want. <laughs> and, this was a, and you know why I now I know it was in 96? Because that was the 50th anniversary of Clips. And he said, and I know what we'll call it. We'll call it the Clips Horn Jubilee. And I went, we can call it popcorn, no problem. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how it got separated from being a Clips Horn 2 to being its own product. So the next thing that happened was we, um, we started getting drones ready, take it into production. Um, the 403 Horn, as we called it, it was that constant uh, 90 collapsing vertical in the same flavor of the K5J. Paul wanted it to be naked. He didn't want a cabinet around it. He wanted, really wanted it to be like the original Clips one. Paul said, do you think, do you think we can make it out of wood? And I said, 
let's find out. And I, I found three companies that said that they could do it. Two of them bailed out because once they uh, attempted to do it, um, they found out it was real hard. But one company actually sent us prototypes. Then it became priority to get the word out. And so I think we made three Jubilees, real pretty ones with grills, with this horn standing on top of it. Went to CES. It, it was really cool because I got to just sit back and watch Paul. I think the thing that would surprise me, and yeah, people liked the Jubilees, we were playing them. But there was a lot of people that just came to play, pay their homage to Paul. A lot of people in the industry that just uh, uh, wanted to meet Paul. And some of the comments I got to hear, that was very satisfying to me. That I got to I got to be with Paul all the time, you know. And so, um, you know, we got to be friends and everything. But to watch all these other people, how uh, how he affected so many lives, to, uh, they wanted to come see him, and they and they stood in line. There was a line for me to come talk to to Paul Clips. That was really cool, and uh, and I realized that. Um, uh, that I was very blessed to work with Paul Klipsch. So um, I had come up with the idea for the Horn Lord at system. I said, do you think we should include this in the Jubilee? And he said, you know what? We're already so far into production of it. Let's save it for the Jubilee too. So here we are, we figured out the mounting get mechanisms, all brass, and um, Paul gets sick. And, uh, and two months later, it passes away. And um, the push to get the product into production died with him. Now, before Paul died, I asked him, because it was a dual 12 high efficiency LF horn, okay? Being a pro guy. I asked Paul, we got into cinema, and so I asked Paul, can I, can I take the LF into the cinema side because we have the dual 50 in MWM, but we don't have something smaller, then we can step up to the direct radiators. And he says, sure, go ahead. So I put it into production on the commercial side. You know, all this time during all this time, we're, we're, we're making Clips horns, the Scalas, Heresies, Cornwalls in, uh, in, in the Hope Manufacturing Facility. And all this time, I'm still continuing on the conversations that we had, Paul and I had, on the things that, how do we solve this problem? How do we solve this problem? You know, how do we push? How do we keep pushing? And so all that time, I'm working on stuff that nobody knows about. And one of those was the Jubilee. The Jubilee too, maybe, as Paul wanted. So this rejuvenation of the Jubilee, it's like, um, I was a kid at a candy store. You know, I, I wanted to let all these things out that I'd actually been putting in another product. I finally came up with a prototype that I was happy with. I had been talking to Tony, and he's our ID guy. Him and Rob were going to work on, you know, how do you put lipstick on this thing, right? So we finally got the cosmetics. So then I got involved with Matt, Matt Spitz. Well, when I talked to him about the electronic crossover, and I said, dude, it, it has to be the primo of the primo. I said, dude, whatever it takes. It's got to be clean. It's got to sound musical. You know, I'll give you the settings, whatever. And we went back and forth. And, and uh, excellent job, Matt. I'm very, very happy with the way this thing sounds. It is. It's, it, it is the best of the best. It's one of the best sounding DSPs. So Matt um, Spitz nailed it. I mean, he just nailed it. And then together with the system, and, and then we got the compression driver. We figured out the LF, and then we built, and we built, and we built, and we built. Change here, change there. When I left Monday, we had three pairs packed up. Beautiful, beautiful looking. There are people coming from the plant. Saw guy cuts the panels. They're the people that finish them and the people that paint them and, and lacquer them, and, but never all together, right? 
So Terry, um, he's the, the finishing guy, got a great idea. He says, you know what, I want to bring all those people. Do you care? I said, no, bring them. I want them to see what, how, what the, how, their, how their part fit into this. And so they were, it was a kind of a, I wish like, I know Paul, I know Paul's looking down and I'm sure he was very pleased. There were people from the plant taking pictures of themselves with the Jubilee. And I'm going like, pride, pride, you know, and the workmanship. Those guys don't, don't get much uh, kudos, kudos. I was very pleased too, uh, because this is Paul's you know, last design. Two months after coming to work for, for Paul, and he wanted to take it to Clipshorn too, and then finally there. It's it's very gratifying, and it has all the tech that Paul and I talked about. That's what I like. You know, if he was alive today, that's 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 where we we would be. He wanted. All, all the stuff that we talked about that was put on the shelf was pulled off the shelf and inserted into the Jubilee. Because you know what? It needs to be there. This is the top of the line. And Paul himself crowned it as the new head of heritage. He crowned it as the new head of heritage. And there's a reason for it. <laughs>